You have a books on your tables. And we have author here. So I think this is really, really cool. We have one of the thought, leader, thought leaders, one of the most inspirational speakers when it comes to the lean services and lean philosophy and lean management. So I would like, without further ado, welcome Niklas Modig on the stage. Welcome, Niklas. So, uh, what is Lean? What is Agile? What is Scrum? What is Sig Sigma? What is Operational Excellence? I believe that all these questions really don't have any answers. But it's, a big problem with this, it's a big problem with Lean. And uh, I often use a metaphor to illustrate what the problem is. And that is, if I were to ask you a question, if you want a fruit, a pear, or a green apple, that's a very stupid question, because the level of abstraction are at different levels. The highest level of abstraction is fruit, which is a general. We could t even take an even more general uh, definition, and that would be food. And then we have fruit, and then I said pear, and then I said green apple. And lean was conceptualized approximately 25 years ago by studies of a manufacturing company in Japan. So um, the American researchers that conceptualized Lean, their view on what operational excellence is, is, or their view on theory, is what you see is what you get. So what they wrote down was what they saw in terms of tools and methods. What did they use at Toyota? And what did they have at Toyota? So Lean was conceptualized on a green apple level. And if you have a concept on a green apple level, and apply it on other green apples, meaning other car manufacturers, it works really well. But what happens when it comes to other companies, service companies, governmental agencies, startups, or even Ericsson, when you try to take knowledge about green apples and apply it to small pears, it doesn't really work. What I want to talk about today is what is lean on a fruit level. Lean and agile can be extremely good concepts to utilize, but when a con concept becomes so popular, then the concept becomes a goal in itself, and then when the dang danger starts. So I think that the right title of, I think that the right title of this lecture is what is efficiency, and then we can ask ourselves, if we know what efficiency is, then we can ra rather say, well, how can we utilize lean in order to increase efficiency? And how can we utilize agile to increase efficiency? Or how can we utilize scrum to increase efficiency? Because efficiency, the definition of efficiency, will be the same in 1,000 years, but then we will have forgotten about what lean is. U utilizing resources is the natural way of looking into efficiency in contrast to flow efficiency, which is the other form, when we, when we look into the unit which is being processed. So flow efficiency in contrast to resource efficiency, totally different unit of analysis. The first one, take a resource perspective, and that is when we uh, look into value adding time from the resource. The other perspective is when we look into value receiving time from the unit. So different perspectives, are we taking resource, value adding, or are we taking the value receiver, value receiving time? The, they also have different goals. We are focusing on capacity utilization of the resource, or we are focusing on fulfilling the particular need. So are we organized in terms of islands or in a system where everyone works together, as we saw in the one-stop breast clinic? We have pros and cons with resource efficiency, and we have pros and cons with flow efficiency. I would say, or the main advantage is that we can have a flexibility because we build depth in terms of competence. The uh, negative part, however, is that we start, I mean, we sub-optimized. If we only f have an in intention to work within our small island, we don't see the big picture. So if we're organized and have incentives like that, we will naturally miss the big picture. If we look at uh, flow efficiency, however, 
the first advantage is, of course, customer satisfaction, because it is driven from the customer need. And if everyone is supposed to focus on the customer need, then everyone has to understand the big picture. Because flow efficiency, they have some advantages, but there are also some disadvantages that the resource efficient organization will be able to take care of. So the interesting part here is that how can we find ways to combine these two forms of efficiencies? And this is also by talking too much about lean and agile, Lean is very much about flow efficiency, and then we are going to implement lean, implement lean, then it can, can be a little bit too inflexible, because then we only are standing on the flow efficiency side. By focusing more on f forms of efficiency and see how can lean help us with that, then we can reach another level of flexibility on how to re uh, utilize these concepts. And that will create a lot of frustration. And what would the result be? Well, the, uh, this is very, very new research, but what we see is that the time invested will decrease a lot if we have continuous contact with our customer. So we have to organize, this, organize ourselves in terms of flow efficiency, meaning rapid co customer interactions, instead of focusing on, well, I'm going to be efficient. Let's, ut let's be utilized. So... Um, this is what we call uh, the efficiency paradox. And the efficiency paradox comes up by these three sources of inefficiency. Long time generates more activities, frustration. Many flow units, difficult to handle. Many restarts and handovers. We will make mistakes, the whisper, uh, whispering. So this is the main argument for focusing on, uh, f focusing on uh, flow efficiency. Flow efficiency will eliminate superfluous work which will be created within different islands. That will affect us of how efficient we can be. So what is a lean operation strategy? Or the patterns that we have seen at Yota? Lean is an operation strategy that prioritizes flow efficiency and then resource efficiency. When are we lean? What is the main indicator of a lean company? If we have a learning organization, then the intention is totally wrong. And what Obasan says, if the intention is on learning, then we can always create value. So the next routine would then be to analyze these deviations. Because they say, if you have a hypothesis about the best way to do it, you test it, it is within the deviations that will drive learning. But you won't see the deviations if you don't have a hypothesis about the best way of doing it. We cannot create a flow-efficient R&D process, but we can create routines so we always loop. So if this is our hypothesis about how the development process would look like, how can we loop so we all the time, all the time modify our hypothesis about what is the best way of doing it? And then the question is, how often should we loop? Is it every day? Is it every third week? Is it Every week? Is it every month? Well, that depends on the nature of, of the process. But flow in, in terms of R&D, that's the looping pattern. So it's the looping pattern that is when you are lean. So going back, what is lean? It's focus on flow efficiency and it is to loop. So always prioritize learning. So focus on flow efficiency. If you're going to be really flow oriented on the football field, then you have to be able to see everything. And that's how we will have to work within R&D. What is the flow? Loop and then Jidoka. Make it visible so we can see the pitch all the time. The ball, the players and so on. So out from these um, uh, principles, they developed different methods. And the methods, they were realizing the uh, pr principles. And out from that, methods, they contained of tools and activities, meaning what do they have and what do they do. The philosophy is the values, how we have to behave, how we have to be as managers. And the principles, flow efficiency and seeing the whole picture, that is how we should optimize everything we do. That is the very core. If everyone understands that, then it's very easy to develop new methods. Because on the lower level, we need different methods in sales compared in different levels within, within administration. So the very core of the Toyota production system is on the top. So if we're going to become a lean organization, we have to work on all these levels. If you're going to be flow-oriented, you have to Im install flow-oriented values. What are your principle which should principles which should be in common within the whole Ericsson organization? What methods do you use? 
What are the meta methods? What is your standard to establish a standard? And so on. So summarizing, what is lean? Lean is an operation strategy that prioritizes flow efficiency instead of first focusing on resource efficiency. Lean is an operation strategy focusing on continuous learning to always have a mindset about learn about the customer need and how to fulfill it. And lean is an operation strategy that is always developing structural capital, meaning creating values, creating principles, creating methods, because the value of a company creating structural capital will be much higher than the value of a company where you always only is measuring the sum of the people's brain.